Hey, this is Jared Cochran with Family Church. Welcome to our podcast. I'm excited that you're here. I hope that God moves through this message to reach you so he can move through your life. Be sure to share and subscribe so that we can reach the world with God's word. Enjoy the message. Welcome to the family room. Welcome back. That was poor timing. Welcome back <laughs> to another wonderful Wednesday on hey, the family good. room. I already said that. Another wonderful Wednesday. That's the catchphrase. <laughs> you can't have the family room. Let me move that over some. Without saying it's a wonderful Wednesday. It's a Wednesday. wonderful, wonderful day. So uh, hopefully we have um, a bunch of new people joining us tonight. Let us know where you're watching from. When, uh, whenever you get on, let us know where you're watching from. Uh, we're going to be discussing Sunday's sermon as always. So if you have a favorite uh, quote or something that you got out of it, you know, put that in the comments. If you need prayer, put it in the comments. If you just want to say hi, put it in the comments. And while you're there, <laughs> click share and share this to people, um, you know, so everybody can get it. Everybody can hear a little bit more about Jesus. But uh, before we get going, let's, let's hit the announcements as usual. Tomorrow is Independence Day, for starters. If you're watching this live, tomorrow is July the 4th. If you're watching it live. If not, every day is Freedom Day. Um, July 4th, that is also the next Dining with Dignity. Do you remember the information on that? Yes, they they're not different. going to be, uh, they're going to be doing it a little bit different. You need to get a hold of Jim and Kathy Lubinsky as quick as possible. They're going to be changing up how they do it because everybody knows to try to go downtown on that night is just going to be insane. So they've got a, a plan in place. They've got it all worked out. It's going to be handled. I don't think they, they are, are changing much, but they are changing something. I don't know the details on that. Perfect. I'm trying to bring up my notes. Uh, the next food truck is this Sunday, Coming July up. 7th. I'm excited about that. I know hot dogs, the hot dogs popsicles. and the popsicles. So don't miss it. It's perfect timing because it is stupid hot outside. It's so <laughs> hot. But uh, yeah, and if you don't get enough pop or popsicles, if you don't, those tomorrow too. And if you don't get enough hot dogs. Um, hey, Riley. Riley's watching. Um, Hey, yeah, Riley. if you don't get enough of those, come, come ready for Sunday because Casey's dogs are is worth phenomenal. Um, the last time, oh, well, the last time uh, I got, I think it was the hangover dog. Yes. And that was great. That's exactly what you got. But there, right? uh, yeah, and then the last up, the, the next youth night for, if you don't remember, the, uh, the youth are meeting monthly during the summer and they kick back up weekly in August. But the next youth night is here in the in the in the building, July twenty third, from six to eight. That's gonna be a uh, Nerf battle. Nerf this is war. me biting my fingernails. You're gonna oh, have a Nerf war in the church. When you announced that Sunday, <laughs> twenty people around me said, "Ooh, I want to come." And you're, so we remind you, it is a youth event, not everyone. This yes. is just youth it's for youth for yeah. youth. For youth, it'll be safe. For youth, They're got for goggles youth. coming for them. They have Nerf wars inside. They're going to turn the lights out. It's going to be crazy. Yes, that's grades six to twelve only. Six to twelfth grade only. Please do not bring <laughs> your five year olds. Do not bring your forty year old self. We don't need any help with it. Amen. We've got it handled. We've got it covered. Please don't show up. It's just for the kids. See Kathy Murray watching from Sandy Ridge, North Carolina. How are you doing, Kathy? Thank you for sending notes this week. It was great. Mike Bowker in town. Glad to have you with us. He um, came just to hear the Y'all don't miss Sunday because Sunday is uh, going to be special. We've got uh, an update on a very thing that we've been working on since January. We're looking forward to sharing it with everybody. <laughs> was so We're bad not giving anybody any hints. insights. We're not giving anybody any tips. Nobody's getting the inside scoop. Don't <laughs> text me. Don't text Jared. Nobody's getting any inside information. It could very well be nothing that what you're thinking. It could be something great, but we want you in the building on Sunday. It's going to be good. It's just because you're preaching. That's all it is. You finally get to preach hey, again. Hey, that's right. I get to preach Sunday. And uh, I'm preaching on passion. One of my absolute favorite subjects. More I'm passion, looking more energy. More passion, more energy. <laughs> Kelsey, I'm going to need that song. We I need, need it for, different. we have to do a reel with it, uh, <laughs> just for that. But <laughs> that's more awesome. More passion, more energy. That, that'll be the next one that blows up on, on TikTok for TikTok. you. TikTok. Okay, tell them about TikTok. If TikTok, you're not following us on TikTok. If you're not following us on TikTok, you should. Um, we have jumped uh, phenomenally within the last day mm -hmm. 24 um, hours kelsey posted a reel from your mother i think it was your mother's, mother's day, day sermon mm -hmm. and uh just before we went live 
this was posted yesterday. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, just before we went live, so this was posted yesterday, just before we went live, this clip has been viewed, I'm, I'll go ahead and say it, as of right now, I guarantee it's at 300,000. It was at 299,000 right before we went live. Um, just taken off the followers. We didn't really have much on TikTok. We went from like 500 something to we're well over 5,000 now, and it just keeps climbing just up. up so if you have a TikTok, I know that a lot of the older people are against it, but that's where a lot of my generation is from. So if you have it, make sure you follow us. Make sure you you know share Get it and there. comment. It is the engagement that drives stuff. That's why yeah. we're always pushing. And I'm not trying to always harp on you know pushing this stuff because the numbers or whatever. But with with the algorithm and everything, it's it's all about engagement. And it's not about the, just views. You did a sermon on don't read the comments, but I I went on there and read the comments. How many? There were like a th over three hundred comments so far. I don't know. She handed me the phone last night. And I, I was really reading. enjoyed it. it. Ninety nine percent of them were all thank you. Needed that. It was encouragement to mothers. Uh, uh, the hashtag on it was uh, uh, TikTok moms. So I saw that and I was like, well, maybe that's why so many, it <clears> so took many off. people saw it. Moms wanted to hear it, needed to hear it. Phenomenal you message. You think about that. People who say you shouldn't be there. Uh, one clip that gets 300,000 views. And it's an encouraging clip towards mothers and being a good mother and all that kind of stuff. So check it out. Uh, and if you're not on TikTok, if you're not against it, go check it out. We're going to go everywhere we can to share the gospel with everybody we can. And that's there's what not it's going about. Be going to all the world. That's it. To all the world to Every creature. Everywhere. Walmart. Somebody might just be scrolling TikTok and see TikTok moms and jump on that and get the word that they needed. That I'm excited because to me, it, it's cool to me since you've been doing this almost 40 years. And obviously, <laughs> mm -hmm. that is just astronomically higher than A anybody that you have ever reached, and you know, myself as well. But that is just cool to me that. Yeah. What God is doing in this house has just, it takes off like that. And there's that many people that get touched around, by it. Around the um, country, around the world. They were, you know, sharing it, not just commenting on it. They were doing the duets or whatever where it looks like this. And there's, mm -hmm. you know, their face on the side. And they're talking about it and agreeing with it. That's just cool to me that yeah. God is using this house in a great way. Um, so and it's with about that, to get greater. It's about to get, it's at 300.6 thousand as of 300, uh, a couple minutes ago. That's incredible. Um with that, broken Sunday. vessels. Broken Sunday vessels sermon. took off. Broken vet. What? That was a great off? sermon. Oh, I was like, what? You've been preaching now for nine months, everyone. Yay! Put it hashtag nine months. Nine He's been months. preaching nine months. Uh, you started off good, but you've really hit stride, and it's really fun to watch how that the growth. People are commenting about it, not to blow smoke up your skirt, but well, people I'm are commenting about it, and I'm really happy to see it. The growth is it's exponential. But this was absolutely one of your very best. Great content. I liked it. And it came together um, interestingly. I've had, I had the idea, I think I shared the idea with you a while ago. Mm -hmm. Well, I shared it with you, but before that I already had the idea on it from just reading um, a comment, funny enough, on YouTube. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, obviously when I first started out, um, only not, it feels like a long time ago. But it also doesn't feel as long as nine months. Yeah. Um, but when I first started out, I had that like fear of, you know, how am I going to get enough messages this much? You know, <laughs> and then it's like, oh, I got one coming up in three weeks. Oh, I hope I have, you know, and then it's like you have something, but you don't know if you're going to get it put mm -hmm. together in time. And then it's like every other week. And then now it was just like last week between everything that we had going on and then the stuff with the with the with the church and, and the meetings and the upgrades and all that uh it, it, i was just the whole time i'm now i'm just like well i know god's gonna meet me there yes. he's gonna make sure that it happens i know the holy spirit's gonna meet me on the stage so i, I it's now i'm just i don't stress it because i flow. know no matter what even if it's Saturday afternoon, and yeah. he wants to pour a word into me that the house needs to hear on Sunday morning. I, I know that he will do That's it. That's the best place to be. I'm Which glad you great. learned that early because I did not. I used to stress. <laughs> I used to stress about it, and then you know Saturday you'd get another inspiration to be like, oh no. Yeah. Which one? Yeah. Which one do you do? You I just heard learn how to flow. I heard um, uh, Stephen Furtick on this sermon. I don't remember when it was, but I was listening to it the other day, and he said. He, he prepares at least three. Mm -hmm. And then it was like Sunday morning or Saturday afternoon is when he like finally like just picks, feels like which yeah. one is right. I'm like, dude, that's insane right there. Like three a week. 
Yep. Pretty much. But um, Come on. broken vessels, we were, we were talking out of Jeremiah chapter 18, um, verses 1 through 6 is the potter's house. But I went to uh, verse 12 because I wanted to get uh, a little more context and I wanted to make sure to bring in the point about how um, the people that he preached to, the Israelites, how they just decided to stay in their stubborn hearts and refuse the message. Um, but it was, it was a fun word. I had, I had fun, um, you know, trying to give the illustration of the potter and then what that represented and then twist it at the end to be that the bottom line was that God uses broken vessels because broken vessels is all God has to use because there's so many people, and I mean, Kelsey even said it recently, like I've been hitting purpose so much, but clearly I think um, that's just a word and a thing that God wants spoken to a lot of people since there's so much chaos yeah. and, and confusion lately. And, and a lot of people, you know, they don't ultimately know their purpose. And we think that we're just, oh, we got to find it or I'm, I'm, you know, have no idea what I'm doing. And it's just, mm -hmm. you know, I really think God is, is wanting people to realize the purpose in everything, the purpose over their lives, the purpose uh, for the things that they've gone through and how he'll use that. And just to make sure that we all know, you know, we're not, we're not just, we're not broken enough that God can't use us. Right. I think that was the highlight for me and for many people that I was around, um, that quote, that the God uses broken vessels because broken vessels is all he has to use. We're all broken in one way or another. Uh, people around me, amen, a lot of a loudness around me. But it gives people encouragement. I saw one of the comments that somebody put on the, uh, the live version of it when you did it was that it gives them hope to know that, you know, you're not so broken that God can't use you. Exactly. What a great encouragement. I mean, you look at literally every single person in yes. the Bible. I mean, uh, you know, look at Abraham came out of a pagan family, and he's the father of faith. You had, you know, Noah didn't really do anything right either. Obviously, Adam and Eve, you know, they're, they are the ones that dropped the ball in the first place. And then you come, you know, to Moses. We were just talking about it beforehand. Moses, what are his qualifications? Oh, he murdered someone and then ran away to hide for 40 <laughs> years. And, okay, yeah, he was shepherding mess. sheep, and then God calls him. But, you know, yeah, that prepares you a little bit. But is leading a bunch of sheep going to prepare you for mm -hmm. dealing with all the complaints and moans and groans yep. of millions of Israelites. And then you have David, a man after God's own heart, who, uh, you know, is given the promise of, you know, Solomon's going to build the temple and, and all of the promises and everything that God gives him literally before he goes and has the affair with Bathsheba. Bathsheba, you know what I'm saying? I'm tripping, tripping over that word. And then murders her husband. Solomon, he gets used in spite of. And then it's just, I mean, you know, Simon turned into to Peter and he was just a fisherman denies Jesus three times, Jesus restores him three times. Uh, you think of Saul, who's persecuting and, and involved in the murder of Christians, and he gets shifted into Paul. So it's, it, you're, you're not too broken to be used, clearly. And anybody that wants to say you, you are, are, the better. Exactly. I mean, it's just a, your, your brokenness is a buildup for, um, for the bigger picture. I look at, uh, in current contemporary times, you look at uh, Billy Graham and his son Franklin. Franklin was a mess. All through Billy Graham's ministry, Franklin was a, he was, just, he was a rounder. He was a fighter. He was a drunk. He did all this. And then, you know, toward the end of his life, he converted to Christianity. And now that Dr. Graham is gone, uh, Franklin has stepped right in there and taken that ministry to a whole different level. And Samaritan's, you know, purse and all that they do, it's amazing. So, yeah, I, I sometimes think that's the absolute truth. The more broken you are, the better. So if you find yourself in a broken state, man, God could be just preparing you for something great coming up in your future. And, uh, you know, like, like he told Jeremiah, if <laughs> you think it's bad now, it's, it it's going to get worse. <laughs> and if you can't survive these easy times, uh, you know, you're not, you're not going to survive the harder times. And he dealt with so much more than many of us mm -hmm. do. You know, we think, oh, we're getting persecuted because traffic is bad. But, you know, he, he, he dealt with, obviously, the fierce opposition from everyone coming against him, losing his family, losing his friends. He's literally preaching against people that are actively involved in worshiping child sacrifice. I mean, this was a very messy situation. And that was the whole point of God calling him to call them to repent. And then, you know, I just, it's just great that he brings him to the potter's house to show him, you know, it, it doesn't matter, 
whatever you're going through, God can change it into something different. Yeah, the story he, yeah. is one of the most amazing stories in the Old Testament. If you've never read it, you need to read it. Uh, 42 years in ministry, not a, soul, not a single record of a convert, no success. Not even a positive response. Nothing. Nothing that you could measure, no measurable anything. Nothing but brokenness and heartache and thrown in prison and sunk down in the mud and forgotten about and he qualified, the unqualified, all of that. And it's, but Jeremiah, you said a, a great quote, he took his pain to God. Mm -hmm. He took his pain to God. Because I think, I think back to the conversation I had uh, with somebody last year or whenever it was, and, and they were going through something hard. They were going through something, and I don't even know what it was. And, you know, I was like, well, you know, why don't, why don't you just get, get real with God about it? Go, yeah. go completely bring it to God because we're like, oh, I have, but how often do we? Because mm -hmm. we think it's, it, it's too messy to bring it to him or, you know, we're, we're ashamed of it. So we think, you know, he doesn't want anything to do with it. And it's like, you realize he sees and knows right. Everything that you're going through, and he still love you, loves you, and he still chose you, knowing that you're going through that, and what else you're going to go through. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you, you know, just get real with them. And they were like, you know, I, I don't think, I don't think that's good. I'll start cussing. And I'm like, if that's what you got to do to just empty yourself out and pour yourself out, you know, yeah, God yeah. is, he's not going to turn a blind eye because right. you get so raw and real with him. And I think. I think there's something to be said with that, that when you finally just completely pour yourself out before him, then he's like, okay, now your wall's completely yeah. down. You're not holding anything back. You've already, you know, you've, you're admitting all of it. You're not being ashamed of it and trying to hide it. Now let's start from here. This is your new ground zero. You know, now your, your clay has been smooshed down and you've got that pressure. Now let's put the inside pressure on you and build you back up into what you need to be. I think that was one of the greatest things, too. The brokenness, the crushing, and the, the making of a new vessel. We th you wrote, or you said, you th we think of pressure as a problem. Instead of seeing it as a blessing, we see it as a burden. I mean, you think about, like, I, was, I think I said it, but like with the gym, if you want to get mm -hmm. stronger or more toned or whatever, you have to push yourself. You have to push yourself harder, you know, lift heavier. You can't just stay some like you know you can't go and, and start and then you you reach this section and then you just stay there that's called was it plateauing you know like you can only you push this far and then you're just like oh that's good enough and and uh, it makes me think of abraham when he finally got isaac and then he just kind of plateaued there for a little bit and he was like oh this this is good enough it's like no god has so much more designed and in store for Something you great. and there's always just the pressures we've got the pressures of life but then the beauty of it is you have that that inside pressure god inside of you pushing you to go further pushing you to go farther pushing you to to, to be more to do better and just to just to be better and and that's what's great is it's not by our own works it's all entirely by him being us being transformed by the renewal of our mind where are you watching from? Let us know where you're watching from and let us know. A lot of people have joined us in between and let us know where you're watching from. I see a lot of people jumping in, chiming in. If you had a favorite quote from that day, we're talking about the sermon, uh, Broken Vessels, that were given last Sunday morning out of Jeremiah ch uh, chapter 18. Uh, give us your best quote out of it. One of my favorites was, the devil doesn't fight himself. Yeah, a house divided cannot mm -hmm. stand. And I always think of just how people have pointed out uh, how Christianity is really the only religion that gets attacked because all the others are false. They're all just false demons, you know, the false gods. Um, and, it, it, and it's just the devil doesn't attack what he's involved in. That's why they're only and always coming against Jesus because they know the truth. They know he's real. They know he's the way, that he's the life. They know that Christianity is the true way, that you need to give your life to Jesus. And, you know, the devil's not going to attack you, when you're following him, that doesn't make any sense. He's already got you on the wrong path and leading you to destruction. So what more does he have to do? But as soon as you turn around and start coming and pushing towards God, that's when he starts coming right in your face and wants to attack you right before, you know, you face the, the biggest obstacles right before the greatest opportunities. Mm -hmm. Talking about calling and purpose, think about, let's just circle back to that for a minute. Jeremiah, you pointed out eloquently that at the beginning, Jeremiah was one of the ones that was called before he was born, before he was formed in his mother's womb, God called him, ordained him, sanctified him to be the prophet to the nation. Uh, and then the, surprisingly enough, the calling that he had was those many years of just difficulty. You said your calling has a weight to it, but it also has a weight to it. 
That was good. Weight. Yeah, the, the weight, W-E-I-G-H-T. It has a weight um, because you don't know the full extent of the purpose. You don't know, you know, like this. I mean, when you started 39 years ago, did you know that you would one day reach 300,000 people? Mm. And I'm just starting out, and it's like, I don't, I don't know where don't God's going to take you're gonna this. Go. And you don't know the, the weight of it because, as you know, and, and a little background for, for preachers and pastors, there's that, that heaviness that <coughs> comes me. involved with it sometimes where you have the weight of, you know, just... Paul said shepherding people and the building and there's still bills that have to get paid and bills at home that have to get and there's yeah. just all the weights of it but your purpose has that weight and then you have the weight w-a-i-t mm-hmm. that you know you don't know how long it's going to take you don't know if it's going to be a generational purpose where you're planting a seed yeah. somewhere back there and uh you know for it for your grandchildren or your grandchildren's mm-hmm. um, children i think that's where i am that's and that's a beautiful good way to put it I believe that that's where I am right now. I think that your well, mom and I, everything that we've done has been to plow the ground and plant the seeds. And you guys, we've planted, God has watered, and God's going to give the increase. God's going to bring something greater. We know we're positioned. We're seeing that. Electronically, we're looking at reaching that many thousands of people and then doing what we're doing here in the community. We're positioned to do it. Uh, but there is a wait to it. Sometimes you want it to happen right now, quicker, oh, faster. Let's go. Um, and this year will be our um, 30 or 40th year, actually, when we get to July. And so you want it to happen quicker and faster, but just let God be God. Let's talk about calling, if I can. I don't want to divert too far away from your thing. But how, did you, how, do, you know, how do you know you're called to something? Um, Has anybody ever broke that down? Um, I don't know how to, I don't know, because I'm thinking back to when I felt called. And it was just, um, I, don't, I don't even remember like how it started. I just felt get that pull mm-hmm. towards this. Mm-hmm. And I was like, no, there's no way. And it was just, it just kept getting stronger and stronger and harder. And finally it was like, okay, I think this is what I'm supposed to do. And then when you finally surrender, surrender to it, that weight kind of mm-hmm. lifts off. And you're, you, know, you, you realize, oh, okay, this, this is right. Mm-hmm. It's so, a powerful thing. You, you just feel it. Yeah, you just know. and it's hard. I mean, it's like it's like the moving in your maybe. I don't know if you're ever one hundred percent sure. Mm-hmm. You know, because I mean, look at Jeremiah. He gets called, and he's like, "No, you know, I, I'm too young. I can't talk." Moses did the same thing. Yes. I can't talk. Mm-hmm. You know, is there anyone else? It's, we're always like, "Oh, are you sure, God?" And it's like, well, if he's picking you, that's obviously for a reason. Mm-hmm. We typically don't, but Juan. Garcia, Christianity is really bad. What is it? Why is it good to have your faith in Jesus only? Uh, because we believe it with all of our hearts. We believe that Jesus said he is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father except through him. He is the living Son of God who came from heaven to this earth to die on the cross for your sins and my sins. Uh, he is the Savior of the world. That's why we believe that Jesus Christ is God. That's why we put our faith in him. That's the only way to salvation. So we pray for think, you. We love I you. Think, we hope you hear that. The main thing, too, is it's, it's not Christianity that's bad. It's people that are broken. Um, I think uh, uh, the problem that a lot of people have with, they, they think of, and I hate to be like cliche, but Christianity and Jesus, it, it's, not a, it's not a religion. It's, it's a relationship. Mm-hmm. And I think so many people have such that misconception that Christianity is a religion. And it's like, no, we, yeah. we're with we're, we're following Jesus and Christianity. And, and what's funny, too, is the people that say that Christianity isn't in the Bible, but they're literally called Christians in the Acts Bible. Acts chapter 11. Yeah. So it's just the problem, I think, that people have with, with churches and with Christianity or the other denominations, Baptists or whatever, all of that just ties into people being broken and, and hurt people hurt people. Um, and the problem is not Jesus, it's not the church, it's just the problem is we're all just sinful by nature, we're broken people. Um, and I, I always like the, the thing of, you know, you, you can have uh, a bad experience at a restaurant, but have you stopped eating? No. No, you, sure. you keep eating. You might not go back to that restaurant, but you're not going to stop eating. And you're not going to stop going to restaurants, you'll just find a different restaurant. And you kind of got to think of, of, of church like that. Like, okay, I'm not getting fed here, or they're kind of mm-hmm. just crazy here. They're messed up here. They're broken here. I got hurt here. Okay, that's fine. Quit that place. Find another one. Yep. But 
Back to the sermon. Back to the sermon. I um, see a lot of people in the chat talking about the quotes. Outside pressure will crush you, but inside pressure from God will build you up. Amanda, good to see you out there. I, I wrote this down as a part of that, an extension to that, because it was so good you were talking about the pressure and the potter's wheel and all that kind of stuff. God doesn't lift the pressure. He lifts you. Yeah, everybody, as soon as something starts happening and we get something put on us or the outside pressures... Um, start coming a little bit too heavy on us. And a lot of times we think that the inside pressure, mm -hmm. uh, we, we, <laughs> we have this big problem where we think everything that comes against us is from the devil. And we never mm -hmm. stop to consider maybe God is using something for his good mm -hmm. in a different way. I mean, literally you look at, this is super extreme, but like the life of Job mm -hmm. and God allowed him to go through literally all of that mess all of the brokenness and the, the skin sores and just everything. All of it. And the entire time, it's like, oh, well, Job's a blameless, blameless man. No, Job had self-righteousness that needed to get brought up to the surface and dealt with. <laughs> Job had self-righteousness. And, and it was like God allowed all of this stuff to kind of almost break him because he never got truly, I would say, broken. Mm -hmm. But then he comes back to, from that and gets restored and obviously gets more than he had before. But we always think, you know, something coming against us is, you know, suddenly, oh, I can't do this, God. Well, no, if, if he put it on you, mm -hmm. he knows that you can handle it. Mm -hmm. And if you think it's too much for you to handle it, that's why he's there. So you'll rely on him mm -hmm. to lift you out of it, to give you the strength to get up out of it. But we always just want God to just wipe it out. And it's like, no, because if he just, if he just sweeps, it, sweeps it away and lifts you immediately out of your problems, you're going to think that you did it instead of God doing it. And we, like in, in this contemporary era of success, uh, we instinctively run from brokenness. We, anything that looks bad, anything that looks like it's going to hurt, anything that looks like it's not a win, if it's broken, if it's not right, we run from it, but it's contrary to the word because the, the Bible says that God is near to the brokenhearted. He finds himself in, in your proximity when you get into your brokenness. So whenever you find yourself in those broken seasons, those broken times, that's when he is closest to you. And as you said, he doesn't lift the pressure, but he will lift you. Uh, he is your glory and the one who lifts up your head. So in those moments, that's when you turn to him the most. I mean, think about it. It's all for, it's all for growth. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody just, well, not everybody, but it's like, oh, we want to give our life to Jesus and then just sit here like this until we get to heaven and, and have our perfect body and are made new and we don't have any problems anymore. And it's like, God, God is our father. And a father does not want his kids to just sit on the sidelines and do nothing. Right. You want to see your kids excel. You want to see your kids succeed. You want to see your kids do better. Better. You want to see them go farther, you know, to live good lives. And that's why he puts this stuff in us and gives us that inside pressure to build us up. That's why he gives us those, those tests and trials to further us in our faith, to, yes, rely on him, but also to become more like Jesus and to emulate Jesus more and show Jesus to the world. I think Kathy said a little while ago, I had it written down, that trouble is not for your destruction, but for your discipline. Yeah, that was one of the, uh, I think it was somewhere near the beginning, but just how, I mean, like that, like the outside pressure, we think it's meant to destroy us, and it's like, no, it's meant to discipline us and, and get us to realize, okay, we need to change something here, and I need to seek God in this area of my life, because it, just like the Israelites, they had they had turned their back to him. They're following the false gods. They're doing child sacrifice. And here comes Jeremiah called by God to tell them, hey, you're, you're screwing up. <laughs> you need to repent. You need to turn your hearts back to God or destruction's going to come. And obviously it was going to come. Now had, and by God's own words, had they turned back to him, None of that would have happened. But they wanted to remain stubborn. They wanted to keep following their own ways. So it's like, here comes the destruction, but they would never truly be um, destroyed because it, they, God would always, they would always turn their hearts back to God and then he would bring them back. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's just and the picture opens, of humanity. That opens up a door of discussion to me about the calling of the preacher and not just the preacher, but to everyone. When God um, gives you what to speak, the world and the way of the world is not always going to want to hear that. No. So there will be... You, Jesus said you will be despised and rejected. I mean, you will yeah, be Jesus rejected. Jesus literally told us we're going to be hated, hated of all men for my sake. 
But it's important for us to, to be the voice and to be the people, even if you're a voice crying in the wilderness, uh, because all around us outside of the church are people that are broken. And you know, as well as I, that the only one that can put them back together again is God. That God's the only one that can take all of those broken pieces and put them right back into a workable, useful form. So pray and seek God and be the voice and don't be afraid to speak up, even saying the hard things, because people need to hear. Jeremiah was not afraid to say the hard things. I think one of the, the best, I can't, I'm trying to remember what book it was in, but one of the greatest things that I read in some book somewhat recently was that at the, at the end of time when we're standing before God and being judged, he's not going to be like, wow, I'm glad you didn't offend anyone. I'm super happy uh -huh. that you filled your church building. I'm super happy that, right. you know, you, you didn't step on anyone's toes and, you know, you did this and you had a lot of friends. I'm super excited that you had a lot of money. You know, he's going to be, you know, well done, good and faithful servant. Were you obedient to my word? Right. Did you follow what I wanted you to do? Were you obedient to me? Did you tell people about me? Did you preach the gospel with conviction? It's important to remember important that, to that we're not called to preach in such a way as that we fill the building. We're called to preach in such a way that we fill the kingdom of heaven. Uh, Make there's, heaven a, there's a difference. You know, you can preach in such a way that you can fill a building. That's, any, anybody can do that. We, anybody can do that. Uh, you just say nice things. You, you give gospel light. You say the things that everyone wants to hear. You never go to the controversial issues. You never deliver meat. You always stay with the milk. You sugarcoat everything. And next thing you know, you're the hip church. And the, everybody shows up and sits in the seats and fills it up. And it's great. But, and from the outside, it looks good. But from the inside, how many of those people are going to occupy heaven in eternity? That's our question. And so that's the question to the preacher. Uh, don't preach in such a way to fill the building. Preach in such a way to fill the kingdom of God. Especially knowing that pastors will be judged more harshly than the people. And, th and that's yeah. what's also super depressing about thinking about that is the people that are sitting in the seats that aren't being taught what right. they need to be taught. And I mean, it's, who does that pastors it's or teachers? It's sad, right? huh? Who does that pastors or teachers? Uh, right? I have no idea. I'm not qualified. Uh, <laughs> Um, but what's sad is there's people in churches all across the world, not, I'm not going to say just America, all across the world that will be in the wrong line mm -hmm. and think that they're mm -hmm. supposed to be on the other. And that is like, whew, that's so heavy. That's like, I can't imagine to like, to get to heaven and think you're about to get in. Mm -hmm. And Matthew then you 25. realize, like, oh, my goodness, my, yeah. my pastor led me completely that's astray and he never told me what I really needed to do. It's a That's nightmare. terrible. Betty, glad to have you watching from home. Davlin, uh, you made a comment. There's so much success in the suffering. I hate to ask you to do this, but take just a couple seconds and build on that. I'd like to hear more about that. Somebody needs to hear that. I really, I looked over and saw that and it zinged my spirit. Like there's so much Zing. success in the suffering. We stay away from the suffering so that we will look successful. But there is so much success in the suffering. Elaborate on that just a little bit. You know, what, what I think of when I see that is you always see successful people mm -hmm. and like, like a, a business owner or somebody, whatever, and you're like, man, I wish I had the money like they had. I wish mm -hmm. I could start a business and do that and you know, be I a millionaire. I wish, oh, what if, what if I could have been back there when Apple started or when Google started? And, mm -hmm. oh, I wish I'd had all that. And it's like, you don't see when they started out the suffering that they went through. You don't see all the sleepless right. nights and you know, trying to talk to people that wanted nothing to do with their ideas and trying to get money to scrape together Come and on. the days that they didn't eat anything because they were pouring everything out into their business or their idea. You don't see the, uh, what is it, small businesses. So many times the, the owner doesn't take a check for a year or two until, yeah, until they get it off the ground because of all the overhead costs and trying to pay the other employees. You don't see, we, we see like... Uh, just to even go even deeper, like the, the people that are like, like a foreman or a, a business owner that has all of these employees and they're like, man, must be nice to mm. get all the big bucks and you don't have to come out here and work. No, and it's, it's like, not. you don't see how that person stresses behind the scenes because now he's in charge of 10, 15, 20 guys 
making sure that they're getting paid so they can provide for their family. And sometimes it might even be at the cost of him providing for his yeah. family. And you don't think that that's stressful? Like, man, if this, if this business falls, yes. all of these guys and their kids, they're not going to be able to eat. Right. And that's, you know, that's the suffering. We, mm-hmm. we just, oh, we don't think about that. We just think, oh, the success. Like everything was some uh, <coughs> overnight success. And it's like, yeah. no, you don't see things that started. Uh, the stories we could tell you. When we started this church, seven people, South Whitney Street, uh, the, the challenges. You know, sometimes you lament and say, man, I'd like to go back to being a small church. No, you don't. No, you wouldn't. I, I pray for every small church pastor out there because it's, it's difficult. You know, you're, you're like every week you're wondering if you're going to pay the light bill, if you're going to be able to keep the rent paid and all that. So, yeah. Amanda, stay tuned for Sunday. Your, your quote, I haven't seen anything about being nice but I have talked about speaking the truth. I'm actually using that exact line, so I'm warning right. you in advance that I'm not stealing that. It's already in my sermon. I love to, I always think when I see something like that, I always think of the, the street preacher, the guy that I talk about all the time, and everybody's always, oh, you're hating. It's like, no, me not telling you right. is hateful. Me telling you and warning you. Yes. You, you, you think if you loving. had a blind relative and they're about to go walk off of a cliff, are you just going to sit there and be like, all right, man, you do you. I don't want to offend you. Right. And then, psh, no, you're going to be like, whoa, stop, don't, don't do that. You need to turn around. You need to come this way. Mm-hmm. That's, that's being loving. Yes. Now, obviously, there is the, the other extreme of it where the people are like, oh, you're going to hell. Like, that's, that's not right. your job. You're not the judge. God's the judge. You don't get to make that call. If they're still here, the Bible's not they a can blunt still turn instrument. around. It's a sharp two-edged sword. It's meant to be worked yeah, like we that. Cannot, the, the, we, we're not here to condemn. Jesus wasn't here to condemn. Seeming peace versus saving peace. Elaborate on that because I like that too. That was the good Seeming Sunday. peace. I'm trying to remember what it was. Seeming peace. Seeming it peace. looks like you've got peace, but oh, you don't. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like that. Like, um, you, <laughs> you, did you, you just say I forgot that? Yeah. <laughs> I've, the, dude, there was so much stuff. That, that only happens to me. <laughs> the, you know, I mean, I'm sure you see it. You say something, and then you're like, I don't remember saying that at all. I don't remember even saying that. Um, I do remember that. The, the, see, the seeming piece, I mean, you think about it, like going to the world and uh, oh, that, and it went with, um, I can't remember, somebody said it earlier in the comments about the God's not dead, because I had it tied to that story, just the guy that didn't follow Jesus, go Phillies, the guy that did, <laughs> didn't follow Jesus, um, and he, he, you know, became the CEO of the business, super wealthy. Mm-hmm. It was actually Dean, uh, what's the guy that played Superman back in the day? Christopher Reeve? No, the other one on the TV show. Dean. Oh, uh, Reeves. Uh, no, somebody that's... Reeves. George Reeves? No, Dean something. something oh, is... Dean Kane. Dean Kane, yeah. Okay. You keep doing Reeves. I'm like, no. Well, that was the, <laughs> the old back in the 50s. Um, not the TV show. Oh, uh, now I'm thinking of Adam West and the dancing Batman thing. Da, 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 da. But um, no, like, Squirrel. you know, he becomes the, the business owner and he's sitting there talking to his grandma or his mom, sorry, with dementia. And, you know, like that, you can have seeming peace. You think you've got it all together. You got all the money oh, in the bank. Yeah. He wasn't married. Um, and, you know, he just had whatever. And then, like, he was dating. Now I think about it, he was, like, dating this... Uh, reporter girl or something and and she was an atheist as well and she was um you know not obviously she was an, she was an atheist and she was going her own way and she had somewhat peace and she was dating him had it all together and then she gets diagnosed with cancer mm-hmm. and he ends up breaking up with her because he doesn't want to deal with it but it's it, i mean like that like you can have everything yep. going for you according to the world all the money all the all the sex you want to have, whatever, if that's, you know, oh, you can do whatever you want and have it all together and life's great. You follow your own rules. Maybe you own your own business. Wake up when you want to. Go to sleep when you want to. Don't have to answer to anybody. And you think your life is peaceful while you're sitting on a boat out in Maui or whatever. And then you get to the end of life and you realize, oh, that's not what this was all about. Or you you end up dying and you realize, oh, I I definitely should have listened to the Jesus thing. I think of the, was it, Heaven's Gates and Hell's Flames kind of thing, where they I've always, oh, I've got, everything's fine, I don't need any of that. And then they die, and they're like, oh, I, I believe now. And it's like, no, that's, no. unfortunately, that's not how it works. Oh, okay. Well, uh, well Devlin, uh, Bean handled it for you. Bean jumped in there. I'm going to chime in on that struggle with suffering. Y'all read the comments, man. Your comments are better than us talking here, so thanks for sharing and throwing your thoughts out there for everybody to see that. Uh, it brings us closer to him and strengthens that bond. Absolutely. 
I've learned more in my valleys than I ever learned on my mountains. So I'm thankful for the mountains. I'm thankful for the valleys. Um, and the only reason you can have a valley. You never know. Is you're coming off of one mountain and, and headed, headed towards to another one. To another one. That's why you get into a valley. <laughs> all in all, it was a great sermon, great service. We're about out of time, but it was fantastic. You, you did a great job with it. If you have not seen it, go take a look at it. If you find it on YouTube or Facebook, share it, click share, pass it along to somebody. Uh, check it out. You'll, you'll be a, a blessing to somebody else that, that might need it. They might need to hear that. It was a good Exactly. Word. And remember, you know, just the whole, the whole bottom line of the thing is God uses broken vessels because that's, that's all he has to use. You're not, you're not broken. Um, He's bringing you towards restoration. That's the point of the pressure. And restoration is always more than it was before. Oh, I, ooh. <laughs> I'm going to start whooping on that one. <laughs> need an organ behind me. Shout out. We need, we need, need another an organ. organ player so I can get a B3. Let's get an organ. Because I'm missing it. But, uh, yeah, the, the restoration is always more than it was before. And you're not, you're not too broken. You're not too old. You're not too young to have a purpose. And if you're older in life or you've, you've hit that crossroads and you thought you were going to go down one path, realize that you could just be being repurposed. You could have been being made into one thing and now you're starting over. That was or good. you thought you were being made into one thing and now God has, you've, you've been pushed old back people. down to start over. Old people and need repurposed. to hear that. Exactly. And that, that was completely, I have, there's nothing in, I don't even have my notes right here, I just have my outline. Um, but that was not, I, I hadn't planned on anything out of that. I, I think that was just completely the Holy Spirit wanting to so say important. something in that moment because. And I loved how you spontaneously, I think, at the end, talked to the young crowd and the old crowd at the same time. That was so important. Take a couple of minutes, if you will. Forget the time. I don't care about the time. <laughs> but the, the couple of minutes that you went about sharing with the, the vision of the church and where we're going, the, the need for the wisdom of the elders, the need for the strength of the younger, and how we need to mesh all these things together. I think that's important for all of us to hear. Yeah, I, well, I, the problem is, is you've got, we'll just say, I don't, for lack of a better illustration, like two sides of the same coin. Mm -hmm. You've got the older generation that has experience and wisdom and then you've got the younger generation that also has experience and wisdom just in different ways mm -hmm. and we always look at the other group like you know who are you to your tell me your wisdom doesn't matter because you're yeah, old and you're yours too young matter i don't want to listen to you you know i've seen it with with me preaching like oh i don't want to take instruction from somebody that's younger than mm -hmm. me that's the dumbest thing you could ever say absolutely i mean seriously jesus was 30 when he began his ministry and died at 33 i guarantee you there was people older than him that listened to him uh and obviously i'm not equating myself with jesus but you know, we're like, oh, you're, you're too young, so I'm not going to listen to you. You're too old, so I'm not going to listen yeah. to you. And we don't realize we all have already gotten different experiences. You've lived your life. Mm -hmm. I've lived my life. I don't know everything you've gone through. You don't know everything I've gone through. And I guarantee through conversations with each other, instead of just pushing each other to the side, we can learn something from yes. each other. And you can pull something from me, and I can pull something from you. And we just, we need that. We don't need... And it was weird to say, but it's like, I don't, I don't want the older generation just getting bitter and like bowing out of everything because they think, oh, well, the younger people are coming up. They don't need me. I don't feel useful anymore. Like, no, you might just not be useful in the capacity that you used to be useful. Yeah. Now you need to be repurposed into yep. something else because God wants you to fulfill a different purpose for your life and to mm -hmm. pour something new out into someone else's life. But when you sit there and you get bitter about it because it doesn't look like how you planned out your life in in your head and you just have a problem with wanting to go towards younger people thinking you know they don't need anything or they're they're too lost or whatever that you're part of the problem yeah on either side if you don't want to go to the other side because of their age or whatever you're part of the problem and that is not how the kingdom works i don't think that's how the body of christ works not everybody's supposed to be a hand not everybody's supposed to be a foot otherwise that's not a body that's just some weird monster Freak from show. the thing we're going to work hard and maybe we'll make that commitment to you guys here looking straight into the camera you look straight into that camera we're going to work hard to work this together. We're going to make the younger work with the older and the older yes. work with the younger. I love that word on repurposing because that's where I am right now. I mean, I'm repurposing. I know that the next season of my life is going to be specifically with men. To I think pour into men. I just thought about it. I've never, we think about how society and culture 
conditions us, mm -hmm. you know, with like schooling. I think I mentioned it Sunday, how schooling is, you're, you're taught from a young age that you're supposed to go to a place for eight or more hours a day mm -hmm. and then go home. That's like public school, unfortunately, because if you do homeschool, you can be done in an hour. That's true. But we've been taught that you're supposed to work for 40 years and then retire. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to retire, and then you're just done. Get out of the and way. And you live and relax for the rest of your days. Maybe easier back in the day before the economy went down the toilet. But it's like we've just been taught to look forward to retire. Mm -hmm. And now that I think about it, that could just be something that the enemy came up with so people would reach the – like this. You could retire from the church mm -hmm. when I come into whatever and just be done. But instead yeah. – there's a new purpose that you can fill out. You yes. can be repurposed instead of retiring. I said it. And you can step into something new and fulfill something else that God Absolutely. wants to do. And your mom and I have said we're going to be your biggest supporters. You and Kelsey, the rest of the church, we're going to be your biggest supporters. I'm going to be right there on the front row doing everything I can to make you and this church succeed and continue and thrive. I'm excited about it. it and and uh, now what we see, and, and we're just spontaneous right now. Um, we went through a, a threshing season here where, where a lot of people actually just uprooted and left, and that's cool. Uh, we, would, we bless them, and we send them with a blessing. Uh, but what we're seeing now is that new people are, are streaming in with, with different thoughts, and we're excited to see the church growing again. And that's what it's all about, reaching people. Reaching, and the people that are meant to be connected to the vision, that's, that's who is going to come. You're developing a team. Already you've got a group of, of young people and leaders that are just already... <laughs> stepping in with freshness and strength, we're excited to see it. It's, it's going to good. Be I like blessing. seeing life. That means the yeah. church is not dying. It's not going to Nurseries die. Nurseries need to be full. Yeah. Children's church needs to be full because that means you've got a future. If, you don't, if you're doing more funerals than weddings, you don't have a future. If you don't have a thriving nursery and children's church, you don't have a future. This is your call to volunteer in the nursery and the children's church. Get involved in those <laughs> ministries because Do it something. matters. I mean, just like that, that we, you can't get to, uh, you think of, I, I'm, I'm immediately, I'm just, I'm drawn back to Solomon. Started out good, ended badly. Went off and track. that's yeah. exactly how Amen. anyone's life can be. You can serve entirely, your entire life, be on fire for Jesus, and then you hit 65, 70 and retire, and then just sit back and do nothing. And it's like, do you, do you think that's worshiping God still? Do you think that's bringing God, God more? The fact, glory, Amen. that you're just sitting on your butt? Eh. And don't try to sit behind, oh, well, I'm just taking my Sabbath. That's not how that works. Because I know somebody's going to be like, oh, I just got to the age and I'm just doing all my Sabbath. No, that is that is not. So we've works. been spitting a lot of truth here for a little bit. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. Hope you're getting something out of it. Um, Sunday's coming. Sunday is coming. Sunday's coming. Passion. Energy. Passion. More passion. More energy. I'm excited about it. I haven't gotten to preach for four weeks. I'm excited about it. Is that it. how I mean, long it's been? I don't know. I think it's four or five weeks. And, and I don't care. I really don't. I'm enjoying what you're doing. So to <laughs> me, know, you, it's you like, You got wow. up, you sound all sad Sunday. You're like, oh, what a No, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Anytime I say that, I'm kidding. Because you're, 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 you're obviously, anointing is there. You're obviously anointed. And you're obviously doing better and better and better every time. Um, don't listen to a single critic. Don't listen to anybody who has anything to say. Uh, you're, the word that you're spitting out is just feeding people. And it, yeah, it's great. Uh, but I do enjoy from time to time get the ch chance to address the house again. So I'm looking forward to Sunday. Um, it's going to be a blessing. It's going to be great. Sunday, 10 a.m. Uh, we're having invitation. the food truck. Make sure you oh, come early. Truck. If you're watching online, make sure you share it. Yeah, don't forget the food truck, supporting and a local business. Some special announcement. And the special announcement Update. that you're preaching again. Um, and with that, uh, happy July 4th, Independence Enjoy. Day. Be safe. Uh, you do not need to hold a single firework in your hand. Yes. Uh, fingers are great. And so stop before midnight. <laughs> Everybody in my neighborhood is like, <laughs> good Lord. That's why I'm kind of glad where we are because there's not a lot yeah. going on out there. Yes. Um, so that's nice. But I do remember when we were um, yeah. off of 16, it's like, oh, my goodness. Dogs are going crazy. But luckily, it is only kind of like once or twice a year, yeah. you know, with New Year's and the 4th of <laughs> July. So let people be happy. I saw something uh, earlier that's something funny somebody posted about, like, all the people that are like, oh, don't, don't shoot fireworks off and blah, blah, blah. And they were like... Um, it was something like, please keep your kids and your dogs quiet because some of us have been up all night lighting fireworks. 
<laughs> just talking smack to the other side of the crowd. Yeah, but no. uh, I want to get uh, up the fun. next morning at 7 a.m. and start cutting grass. <laughs> Wake them all back up. Do that. With that, <laughs> have a good Wednesday the rest of the week. We'll see you on Sunday at 10 a.m. Hey, I hope that message spoke to you today. I want to say thank you to everybody who is involved at Family Church and those who help support this ministry. If you would like to get more involved, you can click the link in the description or head to our website, familychurch.social. We would love to connect with you, and you can find all of our social media platforms on our website. Also, if this message spoke to you in any way today and you liked it, consider sharing it on your social media in any way that you would like so that we can help reach those far from God and return them to the online arms of the Father. We want to see God work through you. We love you. Thanks again for listening. God bless you.